breast cancer. Is it all diet and lifestyle? Or is it genetics and family history? I'm Dr. Steve Tucker, a medical oncologist at Tucker Medical in Singapore. So today I wanna to talk about how breast cancer is increasing, not just in Singapore, but across Southeast Asia and across the world. And if you look by decade of life, age being a very important risk factor for breast cancer, the rate just keeps increasing. Now, one of the things about cancer and breast cancer in general is that a lot of people think it's all about genetics or all about family history. And this is very important, but I'm gonna point out that the increasing rates of breast cancer may be increasing for reasons other than genetics or DNA. So specifically, before we get into the DNA portion, let me tell you some what I would call bad news. The world has a pandemic of obesity and diabetes, or as some of us call it, diabesity. And that's matched with high numbers of cancer deaths and deaths from heart attack and stroke. These are the, the things that are really reducing our length on earth and our quality of life. But when we think about health and we think about disease, I bring it back or wind it back to the core problems. And that's an increase in obesity and overweight and an increase in diabetes and pre-diabetes. These metabolic conditions, obesity and diabetes, are also increasing at rapid rates, and they do play a role in increasing the risk of cancers, including breast cancer. You see behind me, the rates of overweight and obesity in Singapore are quite significant, and we all know that in Singapore, if not across the world, there's a war on diabetes. We have to do a better job controlling our diets, our activities, and our sleep and our stress. But again, how does that interact with the risk of cancer? Because isn't cancer a genetic disease? Well, I would point out that the rates of cancer have been increasing, and we're talking about breast cancer specifically, have been increasing, not just in Singapore, but in China, in Japan, in Korea. And one thing I can tell you about those countries is that the DNA or the genetic background of women in those countries has not changed in the last 40 years. So if their DNA hasn't changed, what did? And I would argue it's lifestyle. We are larger and heavier than we ever were, and we have more diabetes than we ever had. Also, we stay up later. We have more stress. We have digital devices. We exercise less. All of these contribute to lifestyle risk around developing cancer and specifically breast cancer. I would say what I just told you is the bad news. Can I give you some good news? So let's talk about something a little more positive. Despite breast cancer rates or incidents going up, the cure rate of breast cancer has never been higher. And as you can see on the, the images behind me, that despite these high rates of breast cancer, it's almost equally matched by the cure rates for breast cancer. And the cure rate for stage one and two breast cancer is, is very high, 90%. And overall, the vast majority of people diagnosed with early breast cancer should be alive and well five years later. On the same slide, you can see the death rate from breast cancer remains stable, and I would say relatively low. Now, we still need to do a lot more to treat, cure, and prevent breast cancer. These are not numbers I'm happy with, but I can say the good news is we've never been better at diagnosing, treating, and curing breast cancer than we are now. Let's talk about exercise. Exercise is complex. To be a strict doctor and follow the evidence, let me tell you, I have to think about exercise, whether it's been studied to prevent cancer, is it good to to help treat cancer? Is it good for preventing cancer relapse? And I can tell you we have studies that support all of that. The kind of exercise that needs to be done could be as simple as daily walking between eight and 12,000 steps a day. It could be getting 30 minutes of moderately intense exercise five days a week. 
But bottom line is commonsensical that movement, strength training, and constant walking are the way that we were designed to live on this planet. So movement, exercise, and strength all play a proven role in reducing the risk of ever getting breast cancer, the reducing the increasing the odds of being cured of breast cancer, and reducing the chance that breast cancer will come back after the curative treatment. So what you eat is important, your sleep is important, your movement and activity and exercise absolutely important. If I wanted to throw in one or two other things, one would be the obvious, don't smoke. If you're a smoker, how can we help you quit smoking? And then lastly, alcohol. Alcohol definitely increases the risk of breast cancer and breast cancer relapse. And any amount of alcohol plays a role, but I think we have to personalize between you and me or you and your doctor, what is the role and the risk of certain amounts of alcohol in your life? But the, but the academics and the publications say alcohol is definitely associated with an increased risk of cancer and cancer recurrence. So to wind it up, today's question was really breast cancer, nature or nurture? Is it lifestyle? Is it diabetes and obesity? Or is it genetics and DNA and my family history? The short answer is it's both that if you have an inherited susceptibility, a strong family history, that's a really good reason to pay close attention to your diet and lifestyle. And if you have a family tree where no one ever gets cancer, you still need to know that diet and lifestyle play a big role in sparking the risk for cancer and chronic disease. I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments box below or contact us directly at the clinic at any time. I'm Dr. Stephen Tucker, signing off.